Today we're going to be discussing solubility and what solubility is, is basically just the ability to dissolve into any sort of solvent. Normally when we're talking about solubility, we're talking about water being the solvent, but solubility in general is just any sort of solvent. So we can either be soluble, which is something that can dissolve into a particular solvent, or we could be insoluble, which is anything that cannot dissolve into a particular solvent. And again, water is gonna be our universal solvent. It's generally gonna be the thing that we're talking about whenever we're talking about solubility. Uh, it's the thing that we normally make all of our solutions out of. And anytime that we are talking about solubility rules, anything like that, generally talking about water being the solvent, so I don't need to specify that. And in your solubility chart, that will be the solvent that it is being dissolved into. And you'll be provided a solubility chart. So this is a solubility curve, okay? And the solubility curve basically just shows what is going on with uh, the solubility or how much uh, of a particular compound I can get to dissolve in a particular amount of water at what temperature. So as we can see here, we have our potassium nitrate as our compound that is being dissolved. On my left-hand side, on my y-axis, I have the grams of solute, okay? So as I go up, I am increasing the amount of potassium nitrate that is being dissolved. And on the bottom here, I have temperature. And as I go from left to right, I am increasing the temperature. So as you can see with the curve, if I increase temperature, I increase solubility, I can go ahead and follow that curve and I can see that as I heat up my solution, I'm able to get more potassium nitrate to dissolve into it. Anything that is above this curve is called super saturated. It's above the limit of what could actually be dissolved inside of that solution. Now, how we get something to be super saturated is I could very easily come on over here and heat it up and get this much, this many grams of potassium nitrate, and then I let the, the thing cool a little bit. And as it cools, I'm suddenly super saturated, and eventually I will precipitate out, and precipitate, remember, is the solid forming. I will suddenly become a solid again. I won't be dissolved into the solution, but I, until I reach that point, I will be super saturated. I will have more than I could have dissolved into that solvent if I had not initially heated it up. Anything below the curve is going to be unsaturated. It's just any amount below the max is going to be unsaturated. Whereas this line is going to be our saturated line. That's our normal limit at that temperature. That is what is normally expected to be possible to dissolve. And so again, anything above, super saturated, and anything below, unsaturated, on the line, saturated. Okay, so we are going to look at a diagram of a water molecule. Now, water molecules are normally uh, diagrammed like this. They look a little bit like an upside down Mickey Mouse. Um, and you'll see some strange symbols. But what the point of this diagram is, is to help you see that water is a polar molecule. And what polar means again is that the electrons are unevenly shared between the atoms inside of the actual compound. And so that's what these little strange sig uh, sigmas are, okay? They look kind of like half-formed eights, and that is a sigma. It means partial. So these little bumps on water, those little two black uh, ear-like things are going to be hydrogen, and uh, they are weaker than oxygen, electronegativity-wise, which means that they are going to have less time with the electrons. And so they are going to have a partially positive charge. And again, that little sigma means partial. Whereas oxygen, who is uh, stronger than hydrogen, is going to have a partial negative charge because it spends more time with those electrons and those electrons are negative. So water, it's polar, which means it can do a lot of stuff. Since it is polar and just really abundant, 
It is our universal solvent because it can dissolve both polar molecules like itself, like water, other polar things, or it can dissolve things that are ionic. And remember that ionic compounds, instead of it being partially positive or partially negative, we have that full negative, full positive. And since water has these uh, charges kind of built into it, it can do both, which is very impressive and why we choose water to be our universal solvent. Now, I told you the things that water can dissolve, polar molecules and ionic molecules, but what can't it dissolve? Well, it can't dissolve things that are non-polar. If they don't have any sort of charge, water can't attract them, and so it does not end up dissolving. And that's what you see with things like oil. If you've ever added oil to water or you've seen uh, balsamic vinegar uh, and oil salad dressing, you'll see the oil sitting on top instead of being incorporated in the entire solution. And that's because water is polar, whereas oil is non-polar, so they do not mix, they are not friends, and water unfortunately cannot dissolve non-polar molecules.